Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of Easy SAP ABAP. In this video, I'm going to explain the read table statement uh, that is used to read internal tables. Um, you might find it kind of funny when you first start learning ABAP that, you know, database tables, we can use select statements to select data from those tables into either internal tables or into, you know, local variables or whatever. Now, we can't use the select statement for um, internal tables. So let's go ahead and declare in this test program here uh, an internal table, a global internal table, global table of type SPFLI. SPFLI being the built-in, we can actually double click on it to view the database table in transaction SE11, uh, the ABAP data dictionary. It's the flight schedule table. It's used in test SAP programs. SAP provides it so that we're able to, you know, do some test about programs. So in order to read data from this table, let's go ahead, I'll just say I want an event to do all of this stuff in. So I'll say initialization event. Say I want to select data from a database table. So I can say select star from SPFLI into table, which is our internal table, GT SPFLI. If we check this code, actually I'll put a breakpoint right here. Check this code, go ahead and activate the code, and then run it. What we're going to get is an ABAP debugger session, which is going to allow us to step through this code and see what's going on internally. So we're right here past our select statement. So this select statement selected everything from the database table, SPFLI, into our internal table, which if you've never used internal tables before, an internal table is like an associative array, essentially. It's a data structure. If we double click on GTSPFLI, we can see the contents of GTSPFLI. We see down here it's got 26 records. So if I double click on the actual variable name in the debugger, it's going to show me all of the data that's been selected into our internal table. So now that we know what's going on here, now let's say we need to issue a select statement on the data in GT underscore SPFLI, our internal table, but we can't say you know, select all from GT underscore SPFLI into GS underscore SPFLI, right? This is what you would expect to be able to do. But if I check this, I'm going to get an error down here saying that GT SPFLI is not declared as a table, projection view, or database in the ABAP dictionary. So this means we cannot use the select statement with internal tables. So what SAP has provided for us is the read table statement. Now, you can think of the read table statement exactly like you would think of the select statement for standard database tables. So if we do read table gt underscore SPFLI uh, index 1 is an addition we can use into GS SPFLI. We could actually say it like this read table gt SPFLI into GS underscore SPFLI index one. Either one of these are valid if we check our code. We see that no syntax errors occur. Um, we definitely want to make sure that index one does exist in our internal table if we're going to try and read it. Otherwise, we will have an exception that gets thrown up by um, the ABAP runtime environment. So either one of these statements, we'll just comment this first one, is issuing essentially a select statement. So think of this read table as being our select from GTSPFLI into our global structure, GT, GSSPFLI, which is just a structure of type SPFLI. So again, we can add a breakpoint here, check our code, activate it, and run it. What's going to happen? We'll select data from the database table into GTSPFLI. We'll read or select data from GTSPFLI into GS, our global structure, SPFLI. So if we double click on GTSPFLI and have a look at the contents, we see row number one. We have carrier ID AA, connection ID 0017. If I go to GSSPFLI, and look at the contents of this structure, 
we have carrier ID AA, connection ID 0017. So what's happened is we've read the first row of our internal table, we've selected the first row of our internal table into our global structure GSSPFLI. So, I mean, of course, there's things you want to watch out for. So let's say I uh, let's do a refresh statement, which is going to clear all data from GT SPFLI. And what will happen here is now. Oh, I, th I thought that was going to give us a runtime error. Didn't I say it would? Let's see. So we're down here. GSSPFLI. Okay, so it just doesn't read anything. I, I, for some reason, oh, no, I know what it is, guys. Let's take another look. Let's run the same code. We're down here at this breakpoint. The read table statement, if it doesn't find a suitable record, it's going to set the value of SY dash sub RC to 4. So the 4 indicates that the record hasn't been found. There was nothing that was able to be read by the read table statement. And uh, we need to handle that in our in our code accordingly. If everything was a success here, let's take out this call to refresh and this comment that I've got here. Activate this code again. And now if we run it, we see that the read table statement has been run. There is data in GSSPFLI. And SY-subRC is set to zero, which means that a record was able to be read using this method. So another thing we can do with our read table statement, we can say with table key, if we know that the table has a specific key, um, or we can just say with key, uh, what do we want to say? Carrier ID equals AA. So this is like our where clause in a select statement. With key is going to be like our where clause. Now you do want to make sure that that table actually has some sort of key that you know you can use. But now that we have this with key car ID equals AA, we can look into GSSPFLI, and we'll be absolutely certain that we're going to have something with AA. So if you know we could say with car ID equals AA, and con ID equals. 0017. This is essentially just like saying the same thing as saying select everything from GTSPFLI where carrier ID equals AA and connection ID equals 0017. So if we run this now, we see our record does get selected here. We could actually take a look at something else in our internal table GTSPFLI. So we could say AA and 0064. We'll do 0064. Activate our code and run it. So now what gets selected into GSSPFLI is AA and 0064. So that is a very, very brief in, you know, introduction to this read table statement. The read table statement is a lot more complex than then what I'm going over here, if you need to, just highlight this read and read table. Um, you can do F1, and you'll see in ABAP language elements in the help, read table will, if we double click on it, will show us all of the information about the read table statement. It'll tell us, of course, our SY sub RC is set to four. If uh, something can't be found, if a record is found and selected by the read table statement, uh, sub RC will be set to zero. It'll tell us the different additions that we can use here. So we've done read table I tab, table key, or with key. Um, you know, this is, read the of course the the nitty gritty on that. You know, using a free key condition versus an actual table key. Um, you know, if it's a hashed table, you definitely want to make sure you you read all that. That some system fields that do get set after uh, everything's said and done. This will show you, of course, some non-handleable exceptions that you can get from calling the read table statement. And then there's these other, you know, additions here we can read with key. So this is a really good read. 
you know this video hopefully will introduce you into you know just to be able to do basic commands such as this which is very very useful um, if you guys have any sort of questions on the read table statement or you'd like me to better explain something more in depth on it please feel free to leave a comment stating that and uh, you know most of my videos are actually driven by folks leaving comments asking what they need to know so thank you guys so much for watching if this video was helpful at all for you please leave me a subscribe so you can continue to see this content and we'll see you guys in the next video